you doing? What's up? Good to see you. All right. Uh, my name is Preacher. That's my name. It's not a stage name. My mom's called me Preacher my entire life. Because uh, when I was two weeks old, a bunch of people she had never met before was like, when he gets older, he's going to be a preacher. He's going to be a pastor. That's what they seen in me at two weeks old, right? I don't know what I was saying at two weeks old to get the impression I was going to be a preacher. Because what could I say? You know, a goo, goo, ga, ga, goo. Can I get a wild? Like, I don't know if I was changing my mom's milk and the wine. I don't remember, you know? Why is he walking on his bathtub water? But when I tell people my name is Preacher, everybody hears Preacher, but then they don't believe me, so they think of different names on their own. They're like, What's your name? My name is Preacher. Richard? <laughs> no. Clearly started with a P. Preston? I'm black, man. You know my name ain't Preston. There's no such thing as a black Preston. And if there is one, there's one. And he's probably called Black Preston. Because <laughs> that's how it works. I don't make the rules. That's like a white dude named Jamal. He white Jamal, okay? Everybody know that. Where Jamal at? Where's Jamal? White Jamal. Oh, yeah. You know he getting a latte or something. Anyway, so when I tell people my name is Preacher, some people get mad at me. They get mad. Are you an actual pastor? No, I'm not a pastor. Well, I'm not calling you that. Why would I call you that if you're not an actual pastor? All right, don't call me that then. But I got news for you. You know Jesus? He ain't actually Jesus, okay? <laughs> Calm down. Dr. Dre, not a doctor. Surprise. Everybody knows that The Rock is a human. I don't know why we're doing this. Some lady, she got mad at me because I had my shirt off online. She's like, put a shirt on. What kind of preacher walk around with a shirt on? What if Jesus sent you with your shirt off? Every time I see Jesus, he got a shirt off. What are you talking about? Jesus abs. When have you ever seen this man on the cross with some Jordans, a long sleeve, and a hem piece on his neck? He always naked. Preacher's not even a weird name. I met some kid named Thevin with a TH. That's weird. He's like, I'm Thevin. I was like, your mom got a lisp, okay? There's... <laughs> No such thing as Thevin. It's either her or the doctor's fault. I don't know who said it. What's his name? Thevin. How many pounds he weighs? Thevin. You don't see the coincidence? I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to Thevin. Like, clearly, she got braces. My name is Preacher Lawson. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I'll be hello, hello. What is your name? Uh, my name is Kabir Singh. What are you going to do tonight? I'm actually a stand up comedian. Why did you come to AGT? I wanted to come over here and go up against the best. Have you had bad gigs? There was one gig I remember I was hired for an Indian wedding, and they forgot they hired a comedian. <laughs> so I come on. The DJ still played music. I had kids going ring around the posy around me. <laughs> and I basically bombed for an hour, and that was a nightmare. <laughs> well, there's a million dollars if you win this competition. All right. So we wish you good luck. Show us what you've got. Let's do it, guys. How's it going? You guys doing good? Let's go. Come on. Come on. I'm glad to be back on stage, man. I've been quarantined for eight months. It was awful. I've been doing nothing but watching uh, documentaries on serial killers. Have you seen these guys? My God, white people have won that battle. <laughs> My roommate's actually white, and he's like, uh, this is racist. Not all white people are serial killers. I'm like, well... <laughs> it looks like all serial killers are white here, buddy. We're on season 14. Come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a clean sweep. Let's go. And I feel bad because white people are actually the only people in the world that can be serial killers. There's no other ethnicity in the world that can get away with eight unsolved murders in a row. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you don't think black people want to be serial killers? Of course they do. They cannot. Could you imagine a black serial killer? He would get pulled over on the way to getting supplies. <laughs> he hasn't even done anything yet. Come on. Indians, Asians, Hispanics, we can't be serial killers. Our family's way too nosy. <laughs> My mom's an old Indian lady. She's a snitch. <laughs> My mom will just show up. Where is the rope? What happened to the duct tape? Where is the bleach? I'm calling the cops. I'm like, come on, Mom, you raised me. <laughs> Don't do this. I'm your son. Come on. <laughs> the quarantine sucked for all comedians. We all went broke. When you're broke, it's tough to pay bills even if you have money. There are too many passwords. I know. How are we supposed to remember this? I got the Verizon bill last week. I had to crack the Da Vinci code to pay this. <laughs> it took too long. I had the bill in front of me. I called them up. I'm like, what's a Verizon? It's me, Kabir Singh. Let's do this. Come on. <laughs> They're like, what's your account number? I'm like, 478-9432. Where do you live? 2000 Walnut Avenue. What's your date of birth? 123084. Then he's like, what's your bill pay password? Uh-oh. I was like, you... 
I was like, I don't know what that is, and I think you know that I don't know what that is. Let me just pay this. <laughs> He's like, I cannot. I need your bill pay password. I need to make sure it's you. I'm like, who's out there paying other people's bills? Come on. <laughs> that was fun. It was an absolute honor performing for you guys. Thank you very much. was that? Thank you. What a dream come true. Thank you. What a great surprise. Thank you, Sophia. I had to give you a little extra for the finals. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. I feel that way about this look, too, guys. I feel that way about this look, too. I am excited to be here. I'm so excited to be here. Not just because it's the finals, but it's also my four-year wedding anniversary this month. And thank you. Thank you for clapping, because it ain't easy. <laughs> Marriage is not easy, right? You're not always going to see eye to eye. You got to be prepared to argue, right? Lucky for my husband, I wake up every day ready to fight. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, we argue and we fight, but we're both in therapy. Yeah, you ever, argue, you ever argue with a healthy person? It is annoying. Because we get into these big blow-up fights, and then I come back in, and I'm like, I realize my reaction to the previous situation is actually based on trauma from a former relationship that I shouldn't bring into this current space. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and then my husband's like, I want you to know that I hear you and I see you. I'm like, I don't like us. I don't like us right now. I don't want to be that couple. You got to appreciate the little things, right? Like, I appreciate the fact that my husband is forgetful. Because it works out in my favor. Like, a couple of weeks ago when I was traveling with our son, and he forgot that I can still see the baby monitor that's at home. Yeah. And I got a notification that there was motion and sound in my bedroom. And I thought... Shall we investigate? <laughs> so I did. I opened up the app, and I saw my husband having a fake argument with me. <laughs> and he was getting into it. He looked like a battle rapper. He was like, mm. I was like, damn. I would have been mad, but I couldn't stop laughing <laughs> at how he thinks he's going to talk to me during our next argument. Right? I was like, Whoo -hoo. I was like, imaginary me, you gonna put up with that? Cause not real me. Right? You gotta know your opponent. That's how you win. That's how you win. Me and my husband, we know each other very well. My biggest flaw he has to deal with, I'm a jealous woman. Nobody likes jealous people. We know, stop telling us. Every boyfriend I ever had is like, why don't you just trust me? I'm like, that's not how this works. No, now put on your ankle monitor and go have fun. I'll be watching. Thank you. I'm grateful for your time, guys. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. So, uh, uh, Paralympics just finished up, and uh, I'm happy to say that I was a member of the U.S. Paralympic soccer team, and I was a... Um, oh, oh, thank you. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Where were you guys at the games? <laughs> Could have used those 18 claps. <laughs> All right, no, no, oh, no, no. Oh, a little late, guys, a little late. I know some of you maybe don't know what the Paralympics are. It's the Olympics for people with physical disabilities. It's the second largest sporting event on the planet. Second only. T oh, hey guys, I only got two minutes, so please shut up. <laughs> the second largest sporting event only uh, to the able bodied Olympics. <laughs> yeah, it must be tough running with two legs, huh? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Again, I appreciate it, but please. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, does anyone know how we did in the Paralympics? Again, thank you for your support. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's just say me and my teammates didn't have to worry about getting tested for any performance-enhancing drugs. <laughs> I remember I played against the Russian team. I was but a spectator on the field. You know, just watch another player. Okay, well, there's nothing even wrong with that guy right there. <laughs> You better get a neurologist out here. <laughs> I got injured in one of the games, and uh, my coach had the nerve to put me on the disabled list. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> one thing I miss about being on the team is traveling with everybody, because to me, there's nothing more entertaining than watching 12 dudes with cerebral palsy get off an airplane in a row. <laughs> Everybody in the terminal thinks there's some type of zombie invasion going on. <laughs> He's the goalie. Yeah. None of us really walk like that. We just like messing around. <laughs> One thing I don't miss about being on the team is uh, our coach used to make us dress alike, which is great, representing your great, beautiful country. But we're already a bunch of crippled dudes trying not to stick out as it is. <laughs> now you got us all wearing the same goofy-ass track suit. All I'm saying, coach, is just give us a chance. <laughs> People walking by us like, oh, that's nice. They took them to the mall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of them got stuff. <laughs> so naughty, huh, Simon? <laughs> hey, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. My name is Mike Goodwin, I'm 45 years old, and I'm a stand-up comedian. How did you get to stand-up comedy, bro? I think I just was the kid that was trying to alleviate tension in the house. Like, my parents would get into these arguments, and I always wanted to make my mother laugh. Dude, we are simpatico in that, man. That was why I love doing comedy. Right. Hearing her laugh right, right. was the best thing uh, you could do for the Clearly. whole house. Clearly. So as a kid, I knew that I, I loved comedy. I loved it. But I never saw myself as a stand-up. I joined the Army after high school, and I did four years active duty. And then after that, I went to college, met my wife. 21 years later, we have two children. I was working at various jobs to pay bills, but they just were not the dream. And then recently, my wife said, well, why don't you just do comedy full time? And I was like, OK. We're so proud of you. Tonight, is a chance for me to make my dreams happen and to make my family proud. High fives. All right. Hello. And what's your name? My name is Mike Goodwin. Hello, Mike. How are you doing? I'm doing outstanding. I'm excited to be here. Yeah? How old are you, Mike? I'm 45 years old. OK, and Mike, where are you from? I'm from uh, Columbia, South Carolina. OK, tell us about you, Mike. So I'm a uh, former vet, Army vet. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And I also worked as a college counselor in a uh, private school, but now I'm trying to do stand-up comedy. Oh, really? And who's been your inspiration, Mike? Well, my family. Uh, family. I'm, a, I'm a father, and I'll be married for 21 years in August. Oh, wow. And how do your family feel about you being on the show, Mike? They're excited. Yeah? OK, Mike, two minutes can change your life on this show. Good luck. A shout-out to all the teachers out there. Round of applause for teachers. Yeah. I have a newfound respect for teachers because my children are in virtual school now. And when it first started, I was the teacher, and it wasn't good. <laughs> It didn't take me long for my wife to uh, relieve me of my classroom duties. 
Now I'm over security and snacks. <laughs> the issue is my wife didn't like my educational philosophy. I was teaching my children things that I learned when I was a child. Do y'all remember those bizarre stories they taught us called nursery rhymes? <laughs> there was an old lady that lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. So she fed them broth without any bread and whooped them all soundly and put them to bed. <laughs> yeah, that lady going to jail. You can't post that. You can't post that on social media, man. What about this one? Peter, Peter, pumpkin eater, had a wife. He couldn't keep her. He put her in a pumpkin shell. Oh, no. <laughs> and there he kept her very well. Yeah, Peter has a Netflix documentary coming out called The Making of a Murderer Pumpkin Pie Style. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but the straw that broke the camel's back was when my wife heard my son singing this dumb little song that I taught him in music class. Ten little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off, bumped, bumped his, his head. head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. <laughs> Then it was nine little monkeys. Then eight little monkeys. Then seven little monkeys. I'm like, when is this doctor gonna call Child Protective Services on this woman? This woman is clearly overwhelmed by these children. She need to call old lady in the shoe. Yeah. I bet you after some broth and a whooping, they won't jump on their bed no more. Hey, I'm Mike Goodwin. Thank y'all so much.